Good morning all, welcome to our devotion, this lovely Wednesday morning, we just greet you all in Christ, and we are looking at this fascinating letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, we've been looking at just the first few verses, and already we have done that over a couple of devotions, uh, hopefully we'll go a little bit faster as we move into his letter, but these opening verses are in fact really crucial to setting the tone for the entire letter. We open by looking at uh, the statement of Jesus that he's come, that we might have life and have it abundantly. We ask the question whether life is to be enjoyed or endured. And we started looking at ways that we can actually enjoy life. And we said, firstly, we need to remember what we are, which speaks of perspective, that we are bond servants. Uh, we are servants of the living God, and that's how Paul referred to himself and Timothy as. And then secondly, we need to remember who we are, which speaks of our position. Uh, we are literally those who have been set apart. We are saints. We are holy, uh, not by any intrinsic uh, moral standard that we've attained but simply holy in the sense of being set apart for Christ because of what he did for us on the cross and so we are saints if we know Jesus and uh, and so we we are so aware of how many have a poor self-image and often live uh, according to that self-image if we have a good self-image, we will live up to that good self-image. The problem is always who you allow to define who you are. And because most people let the wrong people define them, they walk around with a poor self-image and, and a lack of joy in their lives. And if we are going to be defined by anyone, surely we need to be defined by God. So remember who you are. Then thirdly, Remember why you are. And that speaks of purpose. We are not only to have a position in Christ. We are to have a purpose in Christ. Notice that Paul is writing to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi. The implication is not simply that they happen to be at that specific location. But they were there for a reason. God had placed them there to do his work in that place. You are placed in a specific location by God. That you could be in a place against God's will, yes, that can also be true. But you have to be sure that wherever you are is where God wants you to be, and that God has a purpose for your life in that place. Whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in your church life, whether it's in your home life. If you believe this is where God wants you to be, then the real question is, what are you doing here? As we have so often asked uh, the question in our services in years gone by, are you a consumer or are you a contributor? So many Christians just sit and, and wait for a better day. And the question is, what are we waiting for? Uh, God's not just going to hit us over the head and, and, and you know, move us into action. God's not going to send a lightning strike to wake us up. Uh, are we waiting for some miraculous sign? And we, like the old advert or the current advert for Nike, you know, uh, stop waiting and start doing. God cannot steer a stationary ship. When you get moving, it's when God starts to guide you. So many people just don't get out of the starting blocks. And because they're not moving, they cannot be directed. And they complain that they don't know what God wants for them. Well, my encouragement to you is to start doing, to get moving. And God will soon show you uh, where he wants you to serve. So if you want to enjoy your life, remember what you are, a servant. Remember who you are, you're a saint. And why you are. You are here to serve. And then one more thing. You remember how you became. And that speaks of your privilege. The reason you are who you are is because of what God has given you. 
you are the recipient of so many blessings and benefits through Christ that we cannot even count them. Paul mentions us two of them. In so often in his salutation, he says grace and peace, grace and peace. But let's just pause for a moment on that. What is grace? Well, we spend many devotions looking at grace. We did a whole series on grace as Paul defined it in Romans, especially chapter 5 and 6. But it has been defined, as I'm sure many of you know, as God's free, unmerited favor. In other words, grace is getting God's blessing when we deserve his curse. Grace is being forgiven when we deserve to be punished. Grace is getting God's love when we really deserve God's wrath. And so in Romans 5 that we looked at probably a couple of years ago, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. There is a wonderful definition of of grace. He demonstrates his love for us. While we were still sinners, he died for us. And every time I read that, I, I think of John Newton. And we have shared his story once before, but let's just recap that story. He began his life in a Christian home. He was orphaned at the age of six. He ended up in a very undesirable living arrangement with a non-Christian relative. And to escape, he ran away and he joined the British Navy and eventually deserted and ended up in Africa, where, like the proverbial prodigal son, he wanted to enjoy some wild living. And he ended up with a Portuguese slave trader in whose home he was treated very cruelly. At one point, the slave trader's wife, who really hated white men, compelled him to eat his food off the floor like a dog and he eventually escaped to the coast and lit a a signal fire and was picked up by a ship on the way to England and while on board he stole some rum from the ship's supply and he got so drunk that he fell into the sea and he almost drowned and later in the voyage the ship encountered a storm and began to sink and he was sent down into the hold to man the pumps And he was certain that he would drown, and he was terrified. And as he worked, he remembered Bible verses that had been taught to him as a child, and he began to call on God and encountered Christ in the most remarkable way. No organs, no quiet, lilting music to cause emotion, to lead him to to an altar call or whatever. This is happening in the hold of a ship. And John Newton went on, as we know, to become one of the greatest preachers in England. And the hymn that we all know, uh, Amazing Grace, uh, is really a hymn known by both believers and, and heathen alike. You see, Paul in his greeting combines the Gentile greeting, grace, with a Jewish greeting of peace, shalom. So the question is, why is it grace and peace and not peace and grace? Well, you might say that's semantics. But not really. There's a particular order to that. And the order is is important. Because you can never have peace until you've acknowledged God's grace. So Paul puts it in Romans 5, 1 to 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. You see, the grace comes before the peace. And this is the peace we have with God. Peace with God means that the struggle is over, our sins have been forgiven, and we can finally relax in God. The second kind of peace is the peace of God, and we will uh, come back to that a little later in Philippians 4, 7, where Paul writes, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so, the peace of God comes as a result of having peace with God, the peace that transcends all understanding. In other words, it's the peace that we shouldn't have in the we, we, we shouldn't have in the midst of a storm, but we do have it anyway. Okay, and it's independent of our circumstances, the peace that allows us to trust in God when everything seems out of control. You can't explain it, you can't describe it, you just know it. And that's the peace we ought to have in our lives. And it's that peace that gives us joy. So, how can 
you enjoy your life. Well, we've been through the four actions from these opening verses. Remember what you are, perspective. Remember who you are, your position in Christ. Remember why you are, speaks of your purpose in Christ. And most of all, remember how you became who you are. It speaks of your incredible privilege. And so on that note, let's close in a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this incredible privilege of being your children. Thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. Thank you that you called us for a purpose, that we are set aside, not just for the sake of being set aside, not just to enjoy eternal life with you, but we are set aside for a purpose in this life, a life of abundance. May we live that life of abundance. May we not simply endure life, but may we go out and truly have the joy of the Lord that gives us strength. And so we pray this and commit ourselves to you this day in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.